All right. So after a trade down from 14 all the way down to 23 with the New York Jets, uh, Minnesota selected Christian Derrissaw. Now, he's a super long player. He's very athletic, and he's a pure left tackle by all means. I think even Spielman called that. But he's very natural. He's a very pure player at left tackle. Now, he's a much bigger lineman than most of the other ones they have clocking in. Well, he's listed at 6'5 and 322 pounds. He's a great scheme fit, and he's really able just to move. And he's super long. He has, um, I believe, they measured at 34 and a half inch arms. So, very long, and it's ridiculous. And I think he's able, like, he's able to use his size, his length, and his strength to his advantage. And especially in the run game, he is excellent on the backside. And anytime you hear any kind of coach talk about um, these systems, like these wide zones, they say, you can do well on the front side, but you win games on the backside. So him being a tremendous backside blocker is actually a huge boon to this offense because that's where most of the explosive plays come from, which is excellent. Now, <clears throat> obviously his length is super useful in pass protection, but he's also very aware and patient with how he just approaches pass rushers. And one knock on him in this draft process has kind of been like, he looks kind of lackadaisical, although I... Never saw that. I always viewed Christian Derrissaw basically as one of the top three offensive linemen in this class. And I say offensive linemen because I do think there's a chance Slater's probably a better guard. But I probably would have taken Slater over Derrissaw. But he, I do think he was a top three offensive lineman in this class just in this entire draft. So getting him at 23 is really, really helpful. And... He's just a very gifted and natural left tackle, and for what it's worth, he didn't allow any sacks or hurries by, um, I believe that was from Pro Football, Fo excuse me, I believe that was from Pro Football Focus, and that would currently make the line left tackle, Christian Derrissaw, left guard, you kind of have this Cole Dozier thing going on, which we're hoping Mason Cole wins. Uh, Garrett Bradbury, the center. Cleveland at right guard. And at right tackle, you have O'Neal. Now, I do think Minnesota has two tackles here that can kind of just man down the fort for years to come, which is really nice because I do think O'Neal's going to get paid. I think he's going to he's a, certainly a fine right tackle, and he's been developing into kind of one of the more underrated right tackles in the league as it stands now. I do think left guard is still an issue on it, obviously, when we're talking about Mason Cole or Dakota Dozier being your two guys. It's like, maybe, but I do like the young talent on that line. It makes you certainly feel a lot better having Christian Derrissaw on it just because it makes you sleep a little better at night. Because now, now you have Derrissaw, Bradbury, O'Neal, and Ezra Cleveland all drafted in the first two rounds of the last four years. So... Some argue that they don't value the line. I think they're just taking a longer route to fixing it, potentially. And it's kind of nice to see them break the complete prototype mold, like we saw with uh, Ezra Cleveland and Garrett Bradbury in Christian Derrissaw, as he is six foot five, 322 pounds. And Garrett Bradbury doesn't even look like he weighs over 280 at times. So it's kind of nice to see that, because you're certainly going to get more strength from Christian Derrissaw. So that's kind of nice. A little bit more punch to him. And the actual trade itself. When the Minnesota Vikings traded back. Um, the Jets received obviously 14. Which is a first rounder. And Minnesota gave up one of their many fourth rounders in 143. Minnesota dropped back to 23. And they received two extra third round picks. In 66 and 86. 66 I believe being the second pick in the third round. So... If you want to go picks by round, they currently, in round one, they picked Derrissaw at 23. They currently do not have a second round draft pick. However, in the third, now they have four. They have 66, 78, 86, and 90, while having three more in the fourth round at 119, 125, and 134. So that's seven total picks in rounds three and four, which will allow them to get back into the second round. However, I'm not expecting that to happen early in the second round. You're probably looking more towards once we get around probably like 
if you want to talk about the most they would be willing to maybe go up or a team would probably be willing to drop back, you're probably talking around somewhere between 47 and 50, but you're more likely kind of just around 50 to 55, I would think, is more of a range. Kind of mid to late second round, probably not early second round unless you trade a lot of these. Now, they could opt to sit on them because if you look at their remaining needs, obviously left guard is in there, uh, wide receiver's in there, like a wide receiver three anyway, and like a maybe a guy who could double as a returner. Um, there have been many mumblings of quarterbacks this offseason, so you could maybe look at like maybe, like if they really fell in love with a guy like Kellen Mond or something like that, you could maybe see them jump up. And I do think a tight end three on offense is kind of also something they'll address at some point in this draft, but you don't need to do that in the second or third round. You can easily do that in five or six, which they only have, they have, th- oh, I say only, but they have three picks in rounds five and six, and they don't have a seven. So who knows? Rick Spielman loves that. But defensively, their needs, I kind of think you still need another defensive end, I think. And uh, you could look at safety. And then I kind of have a more, uh, kind of like a sub package interior defensive lineman, if possible. Um, just someone with a little bit more burst. Because I do actually think uh, Dalvin Tomlinson has been underutilized as a pass rushing threat. I think he actually has really good lateral quickness and he can be used in that way, even if his top end speed isn't like all that great. But I do think he can be used in a way to generate pressure and maybe get some sacks. But Michael Pierce doesn't really do that. (laughs) Michael Pierce is a pure nose tackle, very good at it, but he's a pure nose tackle. So it would be nice to maybe get someone with a little bit more burst in there, whether you're talking about uh, Odigi Zua or maybe a Darius Stills or a Jalen Twyman or a Christian Barmore even. But, like, yeah, he might want to look more into that, more of that. And I would kind of expect, the like, if they were to trade into the second round, I'm expecting the defensive end, personally. I expect the defensive end... Um, Depending on what they think of Thielen's long-term thing, because he is over 30 now, you could maybe also see the wide receiver. But that's kind of where I'm thinking on this. I do think they can trade back into the second round with all these picks. It's just, do you want to, or do you like sitting on all these draft picks and maybe attacking all of these needs? Because you easily could. So that is what it is i would like to know your guys's comments down below um what you think of the christian derisaw pick just to be clear i like it a lot i would have liked it at 14 so the fact that they were able to get two threes and him at 23 good job rick um whether or not they lucked into that or knew that was going to happen don't really care it happened <laughs> but yeah your comments on it would be great down below uh like and subscribing super helpful and until next time i bet y'all do